My next guest is John Giles, the mayor of Mesa, Arizona, and chair of the Immigration Task Force for the Conference of Mayors. Some of his priorities include economic growth for the city of Mesa, as well as education and workforce development. Mayor Giles, it's great to be with you. And I, I just want to tell the audience, he's also host of the podcast, It's Always Cool in Mesa, of which I'm going to be the next subscriber uh, and regularly listen in. But just tell us about some of your cool recent guests, Mayor. Well, thanks, Steve. Uh, you know, Alice Cooper was is is our is our latest episode. Alice uh, was, uh, you know, raised in Arizona and has been a great community member uh, his his whole life. And he's he's got a wonderful uh, teen center that uh, has been in Phoenix and then just opened a, 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 another beautiful location in downtown Mesa. Uh, he's a great. Uh, you know, one of the ironies I said to Alice Cooper is one of your big hits is no more Mr. Nice Guy. And he's really genuinely one of the nicest people you'll meet and, and gives back in a, a huge way to our community. So uh, that's that's one episode. Uh, it's kind of the behind the scenes thing. I tell we, there's a great episode, believe it or not, about our about our uh, cemetery and the fact that we've got uh, 23 RAF cadets. They're buried there that, that died during World War Two in Mesa, Arizona, while they were training to be pilots. Uh, and it just it just a lot of little quirky, uh, fun stories about Mesa, Arizona. Well, I love quirky, fun stories. I also love odd bedfellow stories. And when I saw Alice Cooper uh, in your Twitter feed, and I just said, "There's got to be something here." And I just I just love the fact. I mean, it's just something that did that, that popped out is sort of unusual and defining. You know, I, I think as we talk to a lot of mayors who are participating in Washington this week in the Conference of Mayors, you know, it's an interesting opportunity for show and tell so that, that mayors that are such innovation leaders and work with, you know, private sector, public sector, NGOs, you know, they're all trying to establish priorities. And, and I've been intrigued with Mesa for a long time. And, and I'm, I'm, I'm always interested, what, is the, what are the levers you're most trying to push? One that's popped up is the Mesa College Promise and as one of your priorities. I'd love you to share with our audience what the Mesa College Promise is. Well, th th thank you. And, and th this is another great example of stealing good ideas from, from other mayors. Uh, th there are parts of the country where college promise programs are, are not uh, unusual. You know, California, for example, does a great job of su supporting their, their community college systems. And, and most of the cities there take advantage of, of, of uh, legislation in California that, that allows them to provide this college promise, which is a promise that says, if you go to high school in our community, uh, we are, we, and, you, and you fill out the FAFSA form, uh, we're going to make sure that, that you get at least two years of community college in our, in our city. So uh, Mesa is the first city in, in Arizona to do this, but I think you're going to see a lot more communities uh, in Arizona and, and countrywide still this great idea that's been uh, proven in, in other cities, you know, that the, the increment to get out of the registrar's office at a community college after you take advantage of uh, Pell Grants and other things, it's not huge. So this is an affordable thing that cities can do to, to promote uh, workforce and, and, and higher education attainment in our cities. Let me ask you a, a, a question, and, I, and I'll tell the folks, I do not know the realities in Mesa and Phoenix around this, but you have a lot of inbound investment from companies like Google and Apple and Amazon. And you know, in the old days, you go, wow, that's, that's really great. That sounds cool and neat. But I remember you know, two decades ago that that was often a sign that the state and the localities had basically forfeited their tax code as a way to invite these companies in. And I just don't know what the situation is today. So as these companies yeah. are coming to invest, and as you're kind of looking at development, is the equilibrium in the right place between how these companies come in and become contributors to the civic space and issues it, you know, around you and the tax base? Or, or is that still a problem in terms of development, even with brand names like these? No, I, what you're describing Mesa uh, because we we, uh, we we have in re recent years become the home of Apple, Google, Facebook, and others coming to Mesa, and they are the, the investments that they're making uh, in their facilities in our communities are are in each case multi billion dollar investments, and I, I'm I'm pleased to tell you that that there are very little that there's there's some minor state incentives involved, but there is no rebates that are being given from local government for these developments that. The thing that attracts these these uh, these these types of world class employers are two things. It's the investment that we made in infrastructure. Hmm. You know, you, you have to have uh, you know the, the water and the electricity and the transportation infrastructure. Uh, you know, there's there's other types of infrastructure they're interested in. Well, as as well with, as far as workforce development and education, 
Uh, but but that, that's what we've done to attract these businesses, not uh, sweetheart deals, you know, to, to kick back any, any tax revenues. You know, one of the other areas that you're working on with the Conference of Mayors, I understand you're the chair of the Immigration Task Force. And, you know, that's a, that's a you know, third rail issue here in Washington, D.C., depending on where you're at in terms of how you get this. We're also facing a time in the United States where there's an enormous gap in available open jobs, particularly in the service sector, vis-a-vis, uh, -vis, you know, those looking with very low official unemployment rate. So I, I don't know, Mayor, where you're tilting one way or another on immigration, but what are the equities that matter to mayors and particularly border mayors uh, with, our, with our southern border? You know, I, I think you're, you're hopefully you're seeing this evolve into into a bipartisan issue. I, I am a Republican, but I, I come from uh, the 35th largest city in the United States, but we're in the top 20 when it comes to DACA recipients. Uh, and and so and and as you mentioned, I'm I'm a border state mayor, and and we are one of those places that has more jobs than we have workers. Hmm. So so these are all uh, the, you know that that set of circumstances combines you know to to make uh, this a very very real issue in in Mesa, Arizona, and. Uh, not just in Arizona, but 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 uh, nationwide. I think you're you're seeing support for Dreamers and and immigration reform, uh, really in the in the high 70s. You know, across all the political spectrums. So uh, the immigration reform and uh, responding to the workforce demands that that these great employers that are coming to my community, uh, that, that those are are really top uh, top drawer issues. And we're, we've got our fingers crossed that we can. Uh, be a good influence on our, our congressional delegation and, and those around the country to, to take advantage of this administration that is, is so supportive of, of uh, comprehensive immigration reform. You know, it will be interesting to see if, if some of that begins to break free, because right now you've got a lot of people talking past each other. But, you know, before we get, jump to a question from our audience, I'd also like to give you an opportunity. You are a Republican. You're a mayor. You know, I know your work and, you know, you don't you don't tend to operate from a, a, a partisan uh, North Star, as best I can tell. But in that, I guess the question I like to ask mayors is if you were to try to talk to the Biden administration about how to make sure that the rails that interact with cities were better or improved, what would be, because we have a lot of bills coming. We have the, you know, the, the, the bill, uh, well, I don't know if we have Build Back Better, but we'll have the infrastructure bill. You've got uh, uh, parts of the American Recovery Act that are still out there and being funded. And so as this comes in, what are the uh, messages that you would like the Biden administration to hear on how to improve the interaction between federal and state uh, and city uh, management? Well, we're all familiar with the phrase that, you know, all politics are local. And uh, really, for, for anything meaningful to happen in our country, it, it's going to happen at the local level. It's going to happen at the city level. So, so I would just uh, be anxious to remind the Biden administration and the, and the federal government in general that that cities uh, are, are not important partners. They're essential partners in, in making anything happen in a, in a meaningful way. So to, to the to the I, I'm really proud of the way that our city, for example, has responded to the pandemic and the way that we've been such good stewards of the, the CARES Act money and the uh, the American Rescue Plan uh, Act money that has come directly funded to cities. I mean, at, at the local level, my, my city government has distributed over 30 million dollars in rental assistance and utility assistance payments. Uh, and uh, if that were left to the to the state or, or, or federal government, it just you know, it, it would not have happened. Uh, so there's a, a lot of these issues, if not most of these issues, really need to be resolved in partnership with uh, with cities and with mayors and with local governments. Um, and I, I think, you know, uh, the Biden administration knows that. And, I, and I've been uh, encouraged with the outreach that they've made to this point. Uh, we've got a question for you from, I think it's James Jolicoeur. Uh, Jim? Hi, my name is Jim Jolliker. I'm a retired superintendent of schools in Massachusetts and also have my own consulting firm, Partners in Implementation. My question is, how can the dynamics of city strategic and community development be more fully integrated into the city education infrastructure, such as student community service, project-based learning, and job opportunities? Thank you. That's a sophisticated and interesting question. It's really like, how do we get the algorithm right, you know, connecting, uh, you know, opportunity and education. So, Mayor? Well, th thank you. I, I, uh, I appreciate it. You know, we ought to have more, su more superintendents involved in policymaking, for sure. 
uh, you know, my uh, city charter doesn't say anything about me being responsible for education in, in my community. But but very early on, as a as a mayor, I was meeting with our our school superintendent, and he looked me in the eye in a, in a very somber way, and in, in response to my question, "What can I do to help you?" and he said, "Mr. Mayor, poverty is doing very well in Mesa, Arizona." And it, and it really was a defining moment for me to realize that if it, that if we were going to be successful in my community in uh, improving higher education attainment rates and improving uh, the opportunity for, for kids to experience uh, some sort of pre-K you know, before coming to school and in, in making our K-12 districts uh, successful, that the mayor had to own this issue. Uh, education has got to be uh, something that I think about and that I'm working on every day. Uh, we talked earlier about the workforce uh, issues that uh, we're experiencing nationwide and certainly in, in my community. But when I met with these, with these major employers, uh, the, the only thing they want to talk about is workforce and, and what is our city doing to support the education system and, and, and getting folks uh, to their doorstep that can take these great jobs that they're bringing to my community. So uh, again, I, I think I appreciate the question on education. It, it's got to be uh, at the top of all of our agendas, it, it is ubiquitous in all of the, the, the challenges that we're facing. Mayor, just before we close, I want to ask you a question because you're, you're, you have just much more of a tactile feeling for you know, the parts of these conversations that uh, we're not seeing. You, know, they're, they're, you could follow in trap in these conversations of seeing everything is rah, rah, going well, investments coming in. But you just talked about poverty, which I was very, you know, kind of hit me. I'm interested in, in what you think we're getting right or wrong. Maybe education is a piece of that, but are we, do we have blind spots when we look at the divides, uh, the social, the racial divides, the communities that have been left behind you know, by progress, so to speak, and do you have insights into, into how we should be doing this? I, I think that's got to be part of the conversation, and I'm trying to figure out how to do it responsibly, and I don't think it's just Mesa. It's all over the United States, but what are your thoughts about you know, that uncomfortable conversation that there are parts of the people that are not yet fitting in the equation that need to need to be part of that equation? Well, yeah, I quickly realized that, that I have two jobs as, as the city of Mesa, as the mayor, rather. But one is to, to brag about my community. And, and I could, if you wanted me to, I could, I could paint a, a very rosy picture of, of Mesa, Arizona and, and, and uh, tell you how affluent we are, because we are. But Mesa, like I think most other cities in, in this city in this country, is a is a tale of two cities. Uh, there is a, a large a, a, we're we're a great combination in, in my community of people who uh, have the means and have a sense of calling to to serve their fellow man, uh, coupled with people who need a lot of help. Uh, and there, there's absolutely is a critical role for for local government to play and not only providing direct services, which, which uh, again, I'm very proud of what we do. We, we, we are very involved in food insecurity and housing and you know, helping to meet the, the basic needs of, of uh, folks who, who need help in my community. But also uh, the, the most powerful tool that a mayor has is, is convening uh, and, and being you know, the, 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 uh, the matchmaker between, again, the, the, the needs and the, uh, the assets that, that my community has. Hmm. So uh, the, the good mayors know that, and, and the good mayors, I think, spend more time using their soft powers and convening and, and preaching and uh, inspiring people uh, because that's, you know, that, that's what has to happen. Well, John Giles, Mayor of Mesa, Arizona, really, really appreciate you joining us. I also want to tell our audience that Mayor Giles is chair of the Immigration Task Force for the U.S. Conference of Mayors, Board of Trustees, and he's a member of the Mayor's Challenge to End Veterans Homelessness. That, may that Mayor's Conference is meeting this week here in Washington, D.C. Mayor Giles, it's always a pleasure to talk to you. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you.